Hello, and welcome to Fish Wrap TV, episode 17. Today is Friday, May 28th, 2021. I'm your host, Janie Hansen, along with Q Lair. It's been a wild week of volatility in the markets, and as the old saying goes, rain makes grain. We've had rain through the Corn Belt this week. Um, in today's market update, we'll be covering corn, soybeans, and wheat, discussing inflation, and finally, a quick look at propane as a farm input cost. What's the story with corn and the ethanol markets? Well, we, uh, we, we finally took the longs uh, to the woodshed this, this week in, in, uh, in the corn market. Uh, we took corn all the way down to $5 and a half, nearly got a, a four out in front of this thing mm -hmm. before it bounced off. And uh, it was all because of uh, a, a large rain system that came through the Midwest, uh, broke a lot of any kind of uh, moderate drought that we had going on uh, in the Midwest areas in the Corn Belt. And also, we had some beginnings of uh, Chinese cancellations okay. of, of not only uh, corn, but what they've been doing is rolling uh, new crop, uh, old crop into new crop. So what that's doing is essentially they, they've been long old crop. They've got the bucket a half inverse or buck mm -hmm. 20 inverse, and they're rolling it to new crop and selling it essentially to Mexico at okay. these huge prices. So it, it was the trade of the year. Oh. And... <laughs> It's uh, at any rate, we bounced off that five dollars because we broke it hard. I mean, we really got after it. Um, we had two limit days this week in corn, which is really unusual. Corn is corn limits are now 40 cents. We were actually talking about that today, yeah, on ag Twitter. That uh, when I started trading, corn limits were 10. Wow, wheat was 20 and beans were 30, and now mm -hmm. corn's limits are 40, and we hit it twice this week. Jeez. So, uh, volatility is definitely up. Of course, margins are up to, to reflect that. Um, we brought, uh, you know, with that, of course, we have ethanol, which is continuing to go up. Uh, just a quick aside, uh, crude oil broke through the 66 area, traded 67, 67 and a half today. Mm -hmm. So energy is starting to take, uh, take off a bit on the upside. Uh, on the feed side, hogs uh, continue to rally sharply. Um, China continues to buy. So in other words, they're, they're buying corn and they're buying corn second derivatives, I call it, mm -hmm. which is hogs and, and a bit of cattle, but mostly hogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, th this, something happened this week that rarely happens where June hogs traded over June cattle. So mm -hmm. usually that's, uh, you know, 30, 40 cents. And, you know, if you're out there in ag Twitter and you know what the usual number is, you know, cattle over hogs, give me a tweet uh, and let, let me know. But uh, we just don't see this very often. So the bacon's more valuable than the hamburger and yes. your bacon cheeseburger? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but with hogs up and corn up, um, you know, how does that play out? You know, you know, China is just buying. And I guess the market, you know, as we say in, you know, explosives, we'll, we'll settle it out when we get done with it, yeah. when they get done. Because, uh, you know, they are producing hogs here. They're selling, a, you know, just boatloads of, literally boatloads mm -hmm. to, to China, uh, not to mention the corn. So uh, China is definitely the player. They are driving all of the economics right now. And we will see if they can actually unload it all mm -hmm. and, and do that sort of thing. So very, very interesting what's going on. We, we will see, but uh, we bounce this thing off of $5, you know, into the 540s, 550s, which, you know, that is big time moves for corn. Mm -hmm. So... We will see, uh, you know, who's got it next week. Uh, in, it's going to be a very, very interesting market from a trader standpoint next week. Mm -hmm. So has all the <laughs> volatility been in the 2021 crop, or how is it affecting the out years? Um, the out years, we're, we're still seeing uh, everything being raised. Uh, the spreads are starting to tighten. Ironically enough, they are weakening up front, and they're tightening in the back. Okay. So we're starting to see some uh, liftoff in the 20, 21 versus 2, 2 versus 3, and 3 versus 4. Okay. So what, what does that mean for the spreads tightening? What that means is that uh, the fronts are gaining on the backs. So okay. we, we call that inverse. Uh, of course, if, if the front is below the back, we call that a carry. Okay. And what that means is that if, if, if the market wants you to carry it, that's what we call it a carry, which is that we will pay you, you know, four or five, six cents a month to, to you know, actually carry it out. So, yeah, so wait for it. Wait we for want it. it later. Yes, we want it later. Exactly. And which is why the you know, Chicago Board of Trade was founded in the 1840s to mm -hmm. begin with. But it's, uh, you know, the prices are, are still up, but, you know, they're not as up as they were, you know, back, uh, you know, two, three weeks ago. But, mm -hmm. you know, this is still pretty stiff pricing for corn. Yeah. 
So in, in speaking of relationships in the market with soybeans, the soybean meal markets are breaking down and oil is continuing to run up. Um, soybeans themselves are getting caught in the middle. Yes, yes. This is, I mean, if when you look at the meal chart and, and look at the oil chart, it's, it's like a tale of two cities. You know, it's the best of times and the worst of times. And I mean, meal just looks terrible, hmm. terrible on a chart. And oil just continues to, to you know, punish the, you know, punish the shorts. Um, you know, it goes back to our conversation we've had for weeks about, you know, just how bad a problem there is in canola. Mm-hmm. And uh, nobody seems to have a handle on this yet. Um, you know, canola is still hanging around, you know, eight, 850, 900 bucks a Canadian ton. And, you know, it's straight a thousand, but it's, it's, it's off a bit, but it's nothing off like what we've taken off, you know, the soybeans. Mm-hmm. So as a soybean grower, this has been interesting for me to learn about that when you, when you talk about an oil-led rally versus a meal-led. So with soybean oil being uh, effectively the, the byproduct, that's a smaller percentage of the soybean. So if the run-up is, is through oil, it just means you've got a lot more soybean meal sitting around there waiting. So once the oil market well, stabilizes, yeah, it's, exactly. it'll be tougher on the, the bean itself. Yes. And the thing is, is I mean, if... If the bean meal chart looked like the oil chart did, beans would be at 16 bucks right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Yeah. And, you know, that, that just shows you the power of, you know, you know, when you crush your meal in oil, then what happens is you begin to see liftoffs in, in uh, you know, palm oil, cottonseed oil. I mean, every oil in the world, you know, sun, sunseed oil even. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's actually trading in the CME group in Black Sea sunseed oil. Sunflower yeah. seeds. Okay. In Russia, <laughs> on the on the CME group. So mm-hmm. that shows you that people are really starting to get interested in this stuff. Yeah, pay attention to those world markets. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So how about wheat? Well, uh, it, it's also a tale of two kinds of wheat here. Uh, spring wheat area continues to be dry. It did hit hit with moisture, so it'll be interesting to see what the drought map looks like last week. However, today spring wheat put twenty cents on the winners. So they were down 10, spring was up. And I mean, that, you know, you don't see that very often. But uh, it rained uh, pretty hard through the Kansas areas just at the right time. I mean, perfect. And so the winter wheat crops are made. And that we have a saying, you know, in the pits, crops made. So now it's really how big is it going to be? And we, of course, we just had our Kansas wheat tour. Numbers came in over 56 bushels to the acre. Last year, it was in the 40s. So... You know, this this is real. That's why they really took the wheat out to the woodshed this week. You know, we're heading directly into harvest. Uh, today actually was the last trading day of the 2020 crop year. So first, you know, n- happy new year. Mon- <laughs> Monday and Tuesday is, is going to be uh, new crop 2021 is, is it. So 20 mm-hmm. is in the books. Mm-hmm. And but yet, uh, you know, the, that 56 number is, is just huge. It looks like we're going to have 400 million bushels in Kansas. And that is bigger than all the wheat grown east of the Mississippi River in the whole country. Wow. <laughs> One state. <laughs> and you got Oklahoma, Texas, and Nebraska on top of that. So, mm-hmm. so well, happy new year in the wheat markets. That's and right. uh, you're celebrating that with your national holiday on, on Sunday? Yes, yes, the Indy 500. <laughs> and, and uh, of course, usually it, when I was a kid growing up, uh, the race was always on May 30th, so it, it's, it was like, uh, you know, May 31st was Pillsbury and, and Cargill's uh, fiscal year end. So it was just like Indy 500 and New Year's. It was just like, boo, let's have a few beers. Yeah, we, big we weekend for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, but back to the markets. We've been talking with so many commodities being up and implications for inflation. Uh, what, what's going on there this week? You know, it, uh, the, the, the tenor on Twitter now is not that the Fed and the Treasury are out of, they have, this is out of control. The question is, how bad is it? Hmm. And they're starting to talk about the 70s with stagflation, you know, Jimmy Carter, that sort of thing. Uh, today was an absolutely devastating number came out. The Chicago PMI came out this morning at, what was it, 75.2, and it was expected at 68. Oh, that's a big difference. Big difference. And, I mean, it was almost like they thought it was a typo. Uh, this was the worst PMI miss and, and worst PMI number in 30 years, 3.0. Hmm. So uh, what's happened is, is that you know, it is not whether the Fed has lost control of this and, and the Treasury. It's, it's how bad is this going to get. 
before they get it under control. And what do they have to do? Because um, we, on top of this, we had um, disposable income down 14%. So you've got prices accelerating one side, disposable income going down on the other side. So this is not a good thing. So it, it's going to, you know, keep, <laughs> keep watching and stay tuned. Yeah. And see how bad this thing's going to get. Because I lived through the 70s. You know, you guys didn't. Well, most mm-hmm. of you didn't. <laughs> and it, it was not pleasant to have 11% inflation and, and 10% unemployment and 21% T-bills. Hmm. Yeah, that's not what we want. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then the copper, the highs keep coming. Copper keeps coming. Uh, all-time highs continues. Um you know, the housing boom, there, there's conversation that, you know, it's going to be part of the, of the uh, EV play, you know, the electronic vehicle play. So nobody wants to sell it. Nobody wants to get shorted. Uh, you know, the mines are, are ramping up, but it's going to be a year or two before they can really meet the, you know, this increased demand, mm-hmm. if it's really this. But, you know, $4.50, $4.70 copper is, is really difficult for an economy to chew through mm-hmm. at, at this stage. So. Uh, always got to keep an eye on copper as, as the base industrial metal uh, for this mm-hmm. because, you know, they keep talking about cobalt and lithium and all these other little things that go into phones and, and Teslas. But, uh, you know, the base thing is still copper, copper, mm-hmm. iron ore, and those sorts of things. And, of course, iron ore is going to the moon, too. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> so and lumber, what we've talked about going to the moon yeah, <laughs> a really. lot recently. Well, it, it's it's kind of funny because it, it feels like you know lumber is really no problem now, but it's at thirteen hundred, thirteen hundred fifty. So, you mm-hmm. know, we were still at two hundred, you know, not ten months ago. Yeah. So even though it's come off eighteen hundred and fifty, I mean, it feels like it's uh, you know in a bear market. But yeah, just, <laughs> but just in context, just, when you just, zoom out a little bit further, be, be careful because mm-hmm. people are still joking about you know finding a two by four in a in a dumpster two years ago and they thought that was a no big deal but now it feels like you found gold <laughs> <laughs> so and finally propane yeah i started looking at some of these uh inputs uh they there there's a lot of conversation about uan you know you, you know urea ammonium nitrate and dap you know diammonium phosphate futures you know taking off and you know these are some of the inputs that farmers you know have to deal with and you know these these graphs, but uh, I, I pulled a chart for uh, propane here, and that'll give you a, a, a idea here that you know everything is going to be costing more money here, mm-hmm. and you know inflation is the real true killer of growth, and you know we're looking at propane going from what about seventy cents now to eighty eight, right now for you know even nearby much less, you know when you need it for drying corn, mm-hmm. so it's it's really. You know, we we we'll probably gonna have to build a model for propane, yeah, so that we we can help you price the you know when to get that. Just just like um, you know, selling corn, buying propane. You know, just flip the model and, and get to work on that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so speaking of the model, the uh, Croptimize will be making some moves on Tuesday. Yes. So um, more updates for what percentage hedge to be for for farmers and in, in the grain markets. Um, also, you know, tune in next week for continued commentary on what's going on with China's role in the corn markets and the aftershocks of this week's PMI number on inflation. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, anything else for this week? You know, rain makes grain. And th- if you remember 2019, um, we didn't even put a hedge on until the first week of June. We're going to be almost fully hedged up mm-hmm. next week. So... You know, this crop got in early. It got in good. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been no washouts. There's been no, you know, serious replantings. So, you know, if this game plays out, we're going to have big crops this year. Right. But good prices. So, yeah. well, stay tuned. Stay tuned. So that's all for this update. We'll see you next Friday.